Hey, what is going on, SMT Nation? It is your boy, the SMT. We've got Speed with Sneed, a CBRS edition. Band 48, 3.5 gigahertz via Verizon Wireless. Testing is in downtown Cleveland. We're in the Ohio City District, Market District. Devices and plans on the left, the iPhone 12 Pro. On the right, the Moto Edge Plus. The iPhone has the 2019 Get More plan, the Moto 2017 New Verizon Unlimited plan. Testing in a neighborhood with multiple schools, many homes and apartments. There's shopping, bars, restaurants, banks, a lot of driving traffic, walkers. There's a marketplace, a hospital. Wanted to test an Android from 2020 with a flagship chipset and modem and testing an iPhone as well. So different Verizon plans, different priorities, a lot to analyze here. Anyways, test number one, the iPhone 29 millisecond ping, 9 millisecond jitter, 314 on the downlink, 34 on the uplink. And then for the Moto, we got a 37 millisecond ping, 11 millisecond jitter, 140 on the down, 37 on the up. A little bit of variation there, better on the iPhone. For test number two, the iPhone actually came in with a 34 millisecond ping this time, so a little higher than the first one. A 3 millisecond jitter, which improved. 310 on the downlink, 35 on the uplink. And then the Moto 39 millisecond ping, 5 millisecond jitter, 140 on the down, 36 on the up. Clearly, we've got some variation between the iPhone and the Moto, specifically in the downlink department. Uh, so the Moto kind of slacking behind in terms of the downlink speed. I really wasn't expecting it. I'm not sure if it's the phone itself or if it's possibly the plan, but there is clearly something distinguishing the performance between the two phones. So that was noticeable, and I did see that, and I did uh, you know, annotate that as I was looking at the numbers. The Moto was definitely not as fast as the iPhone. So, um, you know, take what you like from that. You know, that's really on you, what you think the case may be. I'm thinking it's the plan. Uh, some may think it's the, it's the phones, but me personally, I think it's the plan. Uh, maybe somebody out there with some knowledge on this, maybe you can confirm for sure. I'd love to hear what you have to say. Go ahead and comment below what you think about it. Anyways, band 48 in the five carrier aggregation variety. This is LT 20 by 20 by 20, 60 megahertz of 3.5 along with band 66, 20 megahertz, either another 20 megahertz of band 66 or possibly band two and 20 megahertz. So total of 100 megahertz. I'm gonna go ahead and move locations here in this next set of testing. So I went to the other block uh, just so I can get a better you know, view of the testing site. So placement, we've got a rooftop site, massive apartment complex. All right, so for test number three, I tested the Moto first, 36 millisecond ping. We have a 12 millisecond jitter. And then for the downlink speed, we came in at a 251 megabit per second. And then we ended the uplink speed with 43 uh, megabits per second on the up. So the, um, you know, the testing on this next round, you know, it was a little bit better for the Moto. That was good to see. So there you can confirm the numbers. Uh, it's, it's definitely better than it was on the other location. I'm not sure what it was, but, you know, the speed's picked up a bit. Let's go ahead and run the test on the iPhone. We got a 38 millisecond ping. We have a one millisecond jitter. So I don't, I don't know exactly, you know, jitter just seems to vary from test to test. I don't really put too much stake there, uh, but we got 514 on the downlink for the iPhone. So, you know, this is the second set of tests that I ran where the iPhone had basically double or more of speed on the downlink. Uh, on the uplink though, on this test, Came in at 6 megabits per second. I'm not really sure what's going on there, but the uh, the Moto tested much better in uplink. It did test better in the uplink on the first set of tests as well. Not by much, but it did. Uh, let's go ahead and run our fourth test here. We'll go with the iPhone here. Uh, 37 millisecond ping. 1 millisecond jitter. And then on the downlink, we got 397 megabits per second. So, um... You know, all that's really left here, it's going to finish up the uh, the uplink, which comes in at 7 megabits per second. I'm not really sure what's going on there, why the uplink on the iPhone in this particular set of tests was so poor. But, uh, you know, I wanted to run a secondary test just to stress the network on the device to confirm that the available carriers were there. It was indeed connected to 3 carrier aggregation of the uh, 20 megahertz CBRS. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and just, you know, give you guys the numbers here. Uh, the Moto came in on this next test with a 39 millisecond ping with a 4 millisecond jitter. And, you know, we can pretty much confirm, you know, the testing. You could see the uh, the 
the carriers at the bottom there, you'll see the three band 48s. And then the other mid bands at the top, AWS band 66, kind of carrying the other part of it. Um, 275 on the downlink here, 43 on the uplink as it finishes up the test here. I go ahead and I'm going to run the test for the iPhone uh, just to make sure that we're getting the same number of tests on each one. Again, I'm not just testing the speeds. I'm also just uh, testing the consistency and the reliability of said speeds. So the iPhone had a 32 millisecond ping and a three millisecond jitter. And, you know, honestly, the, the, the ping times were pretty much the same across the board. They were consistent. They're not great by any means. They're in the 30s. I mean, that's average at best. There's nothing special about those. The jitters were relatively under control uh, in terms of the downlink uh, on the iPhone. 515 on the down and then 7 megabits per second on the uplink. I don't know what's going on there. I wish, uh, I wish I had answers for you guys why the uplink has so much variability between the iPhone and the Moto. Anyways, I switched up locations again here. I went to another part of the street. I just cut the block and went on the other side just to see if I can get any variation, you know, based on where I was parked or whatever. So uh, the iPhone started this test with a 34, uh, I think 34 millisecond ping time, four millisecond on the jitter. We've got 417 on the downlink. And then I think it ended up with a 37 megabit per second on the uplink. So we got a little bit of bonus coverage there. Just running this test just to see, you know, I want to confirm, make sure I'm giving you guys you know, as much data as I can within a reasonable amount of time for testing. Um, I will also run a, a, a fast.com test shortly to show you guys something. Uh, I ran a second test as well. Uh, again, 31 millisecond ping time. You know, it's pretty consistent in the 30s. We came with a 35 jitter this time, which is kind of strange, a little bit high. 411 on the downlink as the test kind of finishes up here. And then we got a 42 megabit per second. On the uplink when the test does finish and i'm going to do one more test after this one and then i'm going to share with you all how exactly you know verizon is doing the get more plan if you don't have the hd add-on what it gives you for video so um just as a little bit of bonus coverage if you don't if you have verizon and you have you know the even the most expensive plan if you don't pay for the hd add-on you know the additional fee which i think is still ten dollars you're going to be throttled hard on video. Verizon does this, uh, you know, and, and T-Mobile does this very aggressively. They both do it really aggressively. AT&T really seems to be the one to have when it comes to, you know, video resolution playback. If that matters to you, if that's important, and you want something beyond 480p and beyond 720p, and you're looking for HD and better, you know, full HD, you know, uh, quad HD. Maybe you got a 4K phone, I don't know. If that's the case, you really got to go to AT&T. They're the only carrier that's really giving their customers HD resolution stuff. All right, so um, I did run one more test, I think, after this, uh, and I'll I'll show you guys what exactly happens here. It's pretty much more the same. Uh, you know, this next test is going to show us that this is not a fluke. CBRS is indeed very fast. 33 millisecond ping time as we're running this test. We'll see that we have a 4 millisecond jitter. I'm just rounding up there. Uh, the downlink speed will come in at 391, and then the uplink will come in at 40 megabits per second. SMT takeaways, CBRS is fast. Verizon will be leveraging it in a big way in 2021. Rural, urban, micro, macros, all types of usages. T-Mobile as well, certain situations. I think all carriers can use it, you know, general access, unlicensed. And of course, we got a new auction up and coming in December of 2021. 100 megahertz of it. Super excited for it. Drop me a line. Let me know what you think of this testing down below. That just about does it for this edition of the SMT YouTube channel. Thank you so much for taking this opportunity to watch. We appreciate you being here. If you enjoyed the content, make sure to give this video a like and share it to all of your favorite social media platforms. Also consider becoming a subscriber if you'd like more from the SMT and activate that bell notification icon so you never miss an upload and you'll be the first to know when something does hit the YouTubes. Also, we've got items in the description box. We've got a Discord server. The at Tech Twitter handle is there, and there's ways to donate and support SMT creation. Uh, that pretty much does it for today. Thank you so much for being here again. Hope you have a great day, and we'll hopefully see you soon on the next video. Peace.